Yeah, 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 yeah. That's just a little preview, a very small preview of Ray Davis tonight. <laughs> Good evening. I'm so, feel so blessed and so happy to see each and every one of you here tonight. I know this is a fabulous night of love and music and, and information from the heart. And so just know that we come here once a month at the time of the full moon, as close as possible to the day. I think it's actually, is it Liz tomorrow? Or the tonight, tonight? Anyway, Liz will, Liz will tell us all about that in a few minutes. So we are, I'm Reverend Nancy Fuller, and I am the Vice President of Spiritual, Mun Spiritual Unity Movement. We sometimes call us some, but I think spiritual unity movement is much nicer. So we have been meeting once a month for t probably 25 years. And um, we didn't meet in person during COVID, so we were online. And we're just so glad to have people coming back out. It's just amazing. I think we've been here a year now already, huh? I think we came in July last summer for the first time in person. So it's, we meet at this time every month because this is a very powerful time for the planet during the full moon and for each one of us. And there's you know, groups all over the planet meeting at this time, even if it's just going out and getting a moon bath, right? Or standing at the ocean and seeing the reflection in the water. It's a powerful time, and that's why we want to link up with those energies. So, Spiritual Unity Movement's mission statement is this to celebrate the spiritual unity of all life and raise the consciousness of light and love through community, meditation, and education, and to inspire and empower those who attend the World Healing Meditation Ceremonies and all of humanity with the life-transforming experience of healing, oneness, and unity. We are saving our planet from the inside. Uh, ho, as Burl always says for us. As you've already heard a little bit, we have a beautiful ceremony for you tonight. Um, I'm just over the moon that Ray Davis is here with us. Um, we have clipboards in the, that are right here. So if you do not, we do not have your current email, phone number, um, a way to get a hold of you every month, please make sure we have that information. We send out a robocall, and I know it, it was received last night at my house. Did any of you see, receive a, the robocall? Some of us, yeah, okay. Um, and then we send out emails to remind you what night it is. So, um, Thank you for just checking and making sure we have your current information. Um, we have a healing ministry, and Florence Riggs is our director of that healing ministry. And we have a healing box. She's holding up in the back. If you want to look back, there's Florence Riggs and the healing box. We take um, we have prayer requests back there, so you can. Fill out a prayer request for yourself, for a loved one, for any friend, anyone really, the planet, we said, <laughs> for anything that, that is on your heart that you would love to see healed. Uh, we ha she has a huge group of healers that, that pray over the requests um, from all over the country, I think. So it's powerful. So I would uh, encourage you, if that's something you would like to do, give us your prayer requests. So I am thinking um, that might be about it for the opening words. I didn't miss anything. I would at this time ask Dina to come up and, yeah, I was just going to ask Dina to come up and do that. Oh, Florence, you're doing it. I'm sorry. That's why you said that. <laughs> I got the, Dina's doing the closing words. 
Here's Florence doing our opening ritual. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Howdy. Howdy. Oh, should we leave this here for you? Okay. So. And if you haven't done it already, please uh, turn your cell phones off, not just on silent or uh, buzzing. Because it does, it does sound, and it will uh, will be a, a part of our <laughs> ceremony. So we begin our full moon this evening with an invocation. Great Father, Mother, God, and Goddess, be with us here now. Hold this space sacred from which we may do our work. Open our hearts to your golden light that we may radiate love into the hearts of all. Open our minds to your divine knowing that we may radiate understanding into the minds of all. Open our spirits to the infinite presence that we may radiate awareness into the spirits of all. One heart, one mind, one spirit, unlimited and indivisible. Be still and know I am God. Acknowledging that spirit is one and the paths to God are many. In our opening ritual, we will honor the world's religions and the many names of God with a quote from each religion on the topic of love. A bell will be rung and a candle lit as the name of divinity is sounded for each of the major religions of the world after which we will sound the Om. Om, as you know, is an ancient sacred tone, a deepening, a sounding. The Om allows an intoning of grace, of balance, and empowerment. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Simply relax into your own tone, open to the nuances of this sacred sound as it moves through you. Our opening ritual will conclude with all of us sounding the om several times, each on your own note, in your own time, in a continuing free form rhythm, creating a tapestry of healing sound. We honor all religions as expressions of the one God, great spirit, divine essence, May the wellspring of love find in us an unimpeded channel. Om. In the sacred tradition of Taoism, the Tao, spirit, arms us with love. Om. In the sacred tradition of Hinduism, Ishvara, Shiva, Vishnu, Brahma, one best worships the Lord through love. Om. In the sacred tradition of Buddhism, Lord Buddha, cultivate a heart of love. Om. In the tradition of the sacred feminine, the goddess in all her forms, the divine mother loves, nurtures, and sustains all. In the tradition of Judaism, Adonai, Elohim, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. In the sacred tradition of Christianity, 
God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is love. Om. In the sacred tradition of First Nations people of all lands, Love is the medicine that holds all life together. Om. In the sacred tradition of Islam, Allah, this is love, to fly toward a secret sky, to cause a hundred veils to fall each moment. Aum. In the sacred tradition of all other religions, you may now together say any additional names of divinity that you would like to invoke. Om, 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 Let us now uncross our legs and close our eyes, if they're not closed already. Take a long and deep breath in and out. In and out. As you take another deep breath, relax and let go. Let go of the day. Let go of people. Let go of the challenges. And just be. And when you're ready, put your feeling attention into your heart, your heart center, and relax. Imagine a bright, warm sun floating above your head. Its rays are emanating down into the crown. The sun is releasing a pure white light. This light is floating down, filling your head, your neck, it floats across your shoulders, down your arms, and out your hands. It fills your torso. Your organs are enveloped in this pulsating, purifying light of the sun. As the sunlight continues to float down your, through your body, through your legs, and out the bottom of your feet, it washes away all impurities, all imperfections, all pain, all disease, and deep into the central core of the earth. Your body is filled with divine energy. Right now, you are whole, perfect, and complete. As the light continues to energize, pulsate, and vibrate, allow it to expand out through your auric field. First, it feels of fills your first layer, and then a second layer, and a third layer. As you continue to feel the perfection of your light body, allow it to expand even more and fill this room with divine essence. Continue to expand your awareness and this divine essence out of, of this beautiful space, this sacred place. And imagine and intend that you are now permeating all of Los Angeles with this pure divine essence. Continue to expand your awareness to all of California, all of the United States, and allow it to float out across the globe, enveloping Mother Earth and all of her beings with this pure divine essence.
The white light of perfection is now vibrating and pulsating, connecting all beings on the planet who gather with conscious intent to heal, balance, harmonize, and unify through the islands of light. We have now set the vibrational tone for the ceremony, welcoming abundance. And so slowly and gently bring yourself back, bring awareness of the room, present time, take a deep breath and open your eyes. I would like to introduce Liz Curran, who is going to bring us the message of the moon. Thank you, Florence. That was lovely. Um, hi, everybody. <laughs> It's fall, right? It's officially fall. So, um, you know, I was thinking as we were doing that meditation and Florence was talking about our energetic fields um, and I was thinking about how we, um, you know, project a certain type of energy, right? The, the moon does that as well. Um, you know, in doing the research every month, month after month for the message of the moon, I've learned some things about the full moon, right? So one of the things I've noticed is that like every single full moon is a, asking us to release what is no longer serving, right? And to keep moving forward. Like that's, you know, that is cycling through every 30 days, every 28 days. Um, but each full moon has a like significant spiritual um, meaning, right? So this is the harvest moon. And, and the spiritual meaning of that is gratitude, right? Being grateful for whatever it is that we've harvested this year. So in, you know, when the moon was named, that was about food, right? But now it could be things like, you know, uh, a relationship, a job, artwork, you know, whatever it is that we've been working on, even our, our spiritual journey, you know, this is the time to harvest that energy Right, which is what Florence was talking about. Um, the other thing I've noticed about the full moon in, in, in reading about it is that there's the sun sign and there's the moon sign, right? And there's this balance that occurs, hopefully, and that's kind of what we're trying to get to, in between those two things, right? So, um, so this full moon is opposing the sun in Libra. Right, and so Libra is like, you know, uh, about well, one of the classic traits of Libra is overthinking. <laughs> so, <laughs> what you know, so one of the things we might be wondering about is the we versus the I, right? Um, but instead of overthinking that, which this Sun energy kind of is is asking us to do, right? Like maybe we can use our inner wisdom and whatever it is that we've harvested throughout the year to guide us. Libra tends to focus on socializing and prioritizing partnerships. And that's all kinds of partnerships, right? Partnerships at home, at work, um, you know, even like with your dog, you know, cause that's, <laughs> that's a partnership. <laughs> I'm working on that. <laughs> um, the Aries aspect of this full moon is illuminating everybody's desire to take action because that's what Aries wants to do, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this kind of overthinking Libra and then we have this sort of jump into fiery Aries movement. So we, again, we need to sort of balance that if we can, right? Who are encouraged to give your independent pursuits right now one final push, right? Because we all know it, it, we show up as our best selves when we've done the work, right? When we're happy, when we're content, when we're grateful. Um, 
you know, when we take care of the inside, when we're satisfied, then we can show up in those partnerships as our best selves. So that's kind of what, what this full moon is about. Um, being a little selfish right now is totally okay because we're gonna have a solar eclipse October 14th, right? And that will be the time where we put emphasis on the partnership. So again, if, if we can spend this, you know, next two weeks or so giving that final push to whatever it is we wanna harvest, you know, then when the solar eclipse comes, we'll be ready to, you know, engage in partnership. Um, so now's the time to get ahead of all the drama, right? That, this is the time to get ahead of the drama by communicating honestly and kindly, all right? Those are our key watchwords. So with that, I just say be good to yourselves and each other. Thank you. Shanti, you can you can stand up. You can join in. You can dance. You can dance if you want. There's a song. <laughs> let, let there be peace in my mind. Let there be peace in. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Om. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Om. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Om. Om Shanti, Om Shanti. Om Shanti Shanti Om 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 Shanti Om I love you! Woohoo! <laughs> Peace within my mind God and only God is moving me Peace within
job at it. Oh, that was awesome. I am so happy that we were up and dancing. Oh. Years ago, before the pandemic, we were at the Onion, and we would get people, and we were dancing around like crazy, so we're doing it again. We're feeling our mojo. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So now, this man, Ray Davis, is going to enlighten and in love us. I just know it because that's who he is. He told me he's a love bug. Mm -hmm. He just told me. He just told me. So I have been, had the privilege of seeing Ray about three, four, five times this last year. And I, and every time, I just get more and more excited, more and more in love with this man. So I have a little bio here that I'll read, but you'll, you'll not need any words after he spends the next you know, half hour, 40 minutes with us. So Ray Davis is a singer-songwriter on a mission to personally introduce the world to high vibe music and arts. High vibe, according to Davis, celebrates the best and the highest ideas about life, humanity, and each individual's unique opportunity to contribute something good to the world. Without pandering to simplistic feeling good formulas or cliches, Davis' songs speak of personal challenge as well as transformation of questions along with answers, and uses stories and reflection to suggest new ways to deal with old common issues. It's powerful soul medicine for those sick and tired of mediocrity and status quo. Ray hosts a weekly online show called High Vibe Saturday Night. With Ray Davis, it airs Saturday at 7 p.m. in the, on Pacific, our Pacific time on YouTube www.youtube.com slash the Ray Davis. Anyway, we'll have that for you later. But without further ado, I love this man. I am so honored that we got to have him tonight. Ray Davis. Surrounded for. 
For there's nowhere where your love can't find me Do I love you, my one I do There is none to love but you There is nothing that can undo my love Just in case, and I'm going to move to the side so that y'all can see what I have brought. Good evening. So, um, I am of limited time. I know that. Doesn't mean I'll abide by it, but I know it. No, I will. I will. So, um, that song was called My One. And it is a song of devotion to the Shekhinah. Anyone recognize that term? To you, what does it mean, the Shekhinah? Anybody? God angel. Mm, that's good. Anybody else? Shekhinah. The divine. That is a broader term, and it is absolutely correct. But the more specific is that it is an aspect of the divine, an aspect of what we call God. It is the Jewish term for the feminine aspect of God. Now, you will excuse me if I choose a different word or phrase for God. Good word, fine word, a little bit more limited than what I intend, what I know. The word God is... Um, for us, it is a derivative of a German term, Gott, which originally uh, applied to a specific deity in a specific religion. Nothing wrong with that. Everything's cool. Everybody knows what you're talking about when you say God. And it's not like God gets insulted if you say God or something else. You know? So I tend to say the living one or the one. So that song was a song of devotion to the feminine aspect of, of the living one, that uh, I like to use the term Shekhinah. It's a wonderful term, word. And I did that. I hadn't planned on singing that song. I came up here saying that I, I'm yielding because first I planned to do the whole thing from there, but Florence said I couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, I know. But see, see, Frank is like, uh, be comfortable. that's a guy's thing, you know. Is it a couch? Lay on it. 
But there's another reason uh, why. It's because I'm getting hip to the situation here. Y'all are about the moon, yeah? So I'm participating in the white work of the moon. Anybody hip to that? There's a little alchemy. There's the red work of the sun and the white work of the moon. So I'm going to talk a little bit. And, and, and this, we'll get to this. It's just this whole situation is messing up my groove, man. I had something planned, and, and y'all dancing to Om Shanti and whatnot. Yeah, I know I can. I will at some point. But I'm just going to flow. And, and this is important. This is important. Because the moon represents, amongst other things, reflection. Yeah? The moon does not have its own light. It reflects. Another funny thing about it is we only ever see one side of the moon. Hmm. You see the moon for age and age and age and ages in memorial. Uh, represents that which modern psychology refers to as the subconscious aspect of us. Yeah? And the subconscious aspect of us corresponds to the uh, in science of mind, it's the great subjective, universal subjective. And the idea there is that all thought, all feeling, all knowledge, all history, everything is contained there, yeah? And when we treat for something, we're actually imploring, we're drawing something from that greater field, that universal field of knowing. But here's the thing about it, both in its representation of the sun or the subconsciousness, all of ageless wisdom teachings agree with this, that that aspect of consciousness does not have volition. It can't choose on its own until something initiates it. And then baby, look out, because there's nothing but expression and choice, and it elaborates whatever suggestion is given to it. But there's the rub. Whatever suggestion is given to it, it elaborates. It's not going to argue. It's not going to debate. It's not going to say, uh, you showed us what you want to order. You want it extra spicy? <laughs> it's going to go with the predominant impulse that you're holding. So. You're celebrating the full moon, the harvest moon in this case. What are we harvesting? Don't be surprised if a, a few things show up in that apple basket that you hadn't planted or you didn't think you planted. So gratitude, yeah, yeah. So are we grateful for the harvest? If I planted apples and I get all apples, I'm grateful, yes? If I planted apples and I get all apples and some rats, am I grateful? <laughs> I told you I'm doing the white work of the moon. I'm, I'm going there because y'all set it up. Well, it depends. It depends on my filter. It depends on my consciousness in this moment, yeah? So, Wisdom, oh, let's go to the next slide. I'm going to have to get back to this evolution revolution business, but this slide I wanted you to get to. Anybody recognize this thing? Uh, what, what do you have here? What do we have here? What do we have here? Tree of life. And I heard Kabbalah. Yeah, Kabbalah. You say Kabbalah, I say Kabbalah. You say... Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Hebrew, it's, it, it's Chaim. It's Chaim, the, the tree of life. So, come here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pretty glowing orbs. Each one of them is actually referred to as an emanation or sefirot, sefira, sefira, singular, sefirot, you know, plural. And there are 10 of them. This glyph, this symbol is a part of Kabbalah. Kabbalah is uh, known as the... Um, it's, it's received teachings. It is the uh, uh, mysticism, uh, Israel, um, Jewish mysticism. Anybody, couple, Kabbalistic kind of folks? Oh, yeah, I know you. <laughs> We've talked about this before. So, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So, what it represents is all of the cosmos. 
how things got here, from whence they started, where they ended up, and where they're going to. From whence they started is limitless light, not literally pictured up here. You see the top uh, emanation, the top ball, the right one, white one? In Hebrew, it's called ketel, or it means crown. And it is the first expression of the living one as it chose to enter into a cycle of manifestation. The living one prior to manifestation is no thing. Ein Sof Or, limitless light. If you can't wrap your mind around it, it's because you can't wrap your mind around it. There's no form, there's no substance, there's no limit. Even the word light that we use, which in Hebrew is all, all, doesn't describe it. It can't be created by us in imagination. Yet, everything in ageless wisdom teachings asserts something back of everything that is not quite capable of description. Again, y'all started this off with the white work of the moon, because this is the realm of the subconscious, imagination of the mysteries. Remember, the moon has only one lit side. What's happening on the other side? We'll never know. You know, I mean, from the perspective of Earth. We got, we got stuff we can look now if we want to, but, but you get the idea. Okay, I, I really have to breathe just for a moment. You see, because I came into this um, incarnation choosing the body form of male. And while the body form of male contains, like all other body forms, equal masculine and feminine energy, which has nothing to do with sexual gender, the male form tends to capture and express more masculine energy. And that masculine energy wants to set things up and put them in order and describe and, and order things around. And I'm finding myself in a situation where I'm wobbly at the knees, man. This is, the energy here is, is right. And, and I'm having to yield to the feminine within in order to find the thing that is asked for here today. I prepared something else. And, uh, but this is cool. This is cool. So... Everything contained here. Ah, that's it. So, the cycle of manifestation begins, and again, this is according to Kabbalah. A lot of science of mind is in Kabbalah. <laughs> or a lot of Kabbalah is in science of mind, all right. So, the, the cycle of manifestation begins when the living one, that essence, that thing that cannot be described, the Ein Sof Or, decides to enter into cycle of manifestation by choosing to meditate upon itself. It meditates upon itself. Uh, there's another phrase, comes from hermeticism. The all is mind, the universe is mental. So everything that we know, everything that we encounter is an expression of the living one meditating upon itself. So that means that each one of you, each one of me, each one of me, okay. <laughs> We are all expressions, specific expressions of the living one. There is no difference whether we seem high, low, wise, small, narrow, dead, blah, 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 blah. no difference. All the same stuff, particularized. So you see, what happens is from Keta, from crown, from, from the crown, it goes to that gray one over there, wisdom. So all of wisdom and understanding. So we get to, and then we move on through. I don't have nearly enough time to go through this. I wanted this up here because it's speaking to you with words that I cannot form. The image is speaking to you at the subconscious level. 
to be manifested at some point, expressed or reflected at some point in the field of your self-conscious awareness. Whether you pick it up or not is dependent upon the work that you do every day. You spend some time in meditation, you do some prayer work, you get some study in, you have good conversations, high vibe conversations with other people. You do something good for somebody, some loving act. You are sharpening your self-conscious ability to recognize the reflections of the reflections of the good of life, the good of God the joy, the love, the peace, which is constantly sending that to your subconscious self. Mm. So in Science of Mind, if I'm not mistaken, this is described as where you set your mind, manifestation happens, something like that? Is that right, Reverend Nancy? Something like that, yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay, so the process of the living one Entering into manifestation is called involution. Ah, thank you, there's, there's my hook. It's called involution. It involves itself. And it doesn't start by involving itself in individual. It starts by involving itself in wisdom. Understanding. But as we move down the tree, things start to get a little bit more particular, especially after we get to this middle one right here, the, the yellowish gold one. That's called tifarette, which roughly translates into beauty. So in that song, I said, as the sun ascends to its glory and in beauty gives its rays. I was actually singing about tifarette. And it is, it is uh, another symbol that corresponds to that is the sun. And it's at that stage and below that we begin to see the human personality showing up. Not, again, in particulars, but in bigger stages. So for, it goes from there to this green one labeled victory, which in Hebrew is nitzach. And it actually refers to our group soul, group consciousness, human consciousness, and all things emotional. That's why, you know, a lot of times we feel it. You may not be able to say it, but you gotta feel it. And the feeling will usually point you to some kind of a word. And then from Nitzach moves to uh, what's called splendor or hod. And splendor has everything to do with intellect, language, Art, to a certain degree, because they're kind of both. But, you know, art is formalized emotion. And then from there, to foundation, Yisod, its symbol is the moon. So you have the sun above, the moon, and then down below, Malkut, or the form, the earth, solid stuff. And by the time we get to Malkut, we're dealing with individual people, individual flowers, individual boids, bees. And yes, I said boids, not birds, boids. <laughs> it abuses me, so I said it. <laughs> we deal with individual things. Now, here's where the trouble starts for us humans. Because we enter into, we, we are really brilliant at this that self-conscious aspect that I talked about, you know its real design is? To create illusion. To create the illusion of separate, of different. When you leave this place, if you drove here, it is necessary for you to be able to distinguish between one car and another, your car and the car ahead of you, your car and the car coming the other direction in the next lane. Because if you can't, Right? It's just that we get, we become really, really good, 
really good because we evolved this way. We've got the best self-conscious on the planet by a species. We're the best at this. But we've taken it a little bit far. We, not, we don't just dis see, discern distinction. We think that they're actually different things. So we meet somebody and we say, you are you and I am I. <laughs> Which is kind of true, but here above the moon is the uh, Akashic field. This is where we get to see the structure of life, the foundation. And we see that everything is made of versions of the same thing. And what is the same thing? Oh, the one. Its feminine aspect, the Shekhinah, and so on and so on and so on. One, one life. One substance, one mind, one will, one consciousness. So that's involution. What we're doing is evolution. We started out in the same way as everything else on the planet, mineral. Then came vegetable. Then came animal. Then came us best self-conscious on the planet. We are now interested in evolving above the level of, we're, well, think about it. How evolved are we, actually? I heard the news today, oh boy. Not so much. Matter of fact, as a species, we're kind of idiotic. Picking fights where no fight is necessary. Qua squabbling over pieces of dirt where we drew an imaginary line and say, you's over there, we's over here. And come to think of it, we're going to take what you's got. Come on, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't help anybody. It just creates a bunch of conflict that's got to be, re you know, I hit you, you're going to have to hit me. I kill you, you're going to have to kill me. We are, we are choosing to evolve. Hence, would you go back one slide? The evolution revolution. This is a phrase, that I, a term that I use. I didn't make up evolution revolution. Those two words have been put together by different people for different things. Here's how I choose to call it. And that's why I need, there you go. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it because I have so many ways of describing it, but it makes more sense if I say that the evolution revolution is, open up. A movement of one, movement of one, or a moo. A movement of one, moo. Where each revolutionary chooses to take down their current governing mind and become the highest evolutionary version of themselves, no matter what. No matter what. It's crazy stuff. But I got to tell you, by virtue of you all, you being here and involved in the stuff you are, you're already an evolutionary revolutionary. You really are. And it is up to us to help elevate the consciousness of the planet, to instigate, to spark, to do the work of self-conscious suggestion to the subconsciousness of millions and billions of people over the next few generations, so that a few of them in each generation catch what you've already caught and start doing the kind of work that you're already engaged in so that their, their consciousness rises to the point where, uh, you can go one more down to the, no, no, no not, not this too far, one more, thank you, where they're now starting to see what's above the moon. They're starting to see what's on the other side. They're starting to see the mystery of unity, echad in Hebrew. They're starting to see that you and I, yeah, you're different in so many amazing, marvelous ways. Look what the living one did with you. Oh my goodness. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Don't say that you don't see color when you see me. 
you better see all this color. I want you to see it all and love it. Because I see all of you and I love, 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 love it. I don't care the form. I don't care the season. I don't care the fashion. Why would I care about any silly thing like that? Those are just mental constructs anyway. Hmm. I'm supposed to be singing some more songs. I've, but y'all started this. It's the white work on the moon. It's just gotten me lit up. I could... All right, let's get some songs. Shall we get some songs in? All right, this is a good evolutionary, revolutionary song. Be with you in a second. This is a good evil revo song. Oh, okay. Well, I'm about done anyway. I'm a, a, that, so, that is a particular, you got me thinking about this song, and it's a great idea. But, ah, oh yes, so evolutionary, revolutionary. Here's the thing, though. This evolution is the... It is the destiny of all humans. We are all destined to be there. But how long did it take us to get to this point? Millions of years. And it just might take a couple more million to get to see the dark side of the moon if we let things go naturally. Problem with that is, at this rate, we might not be here long, that long. The earth might have just said, y'all too crazy, bye. <laughs> like it's done with other species. Uh, species leave the planet. Some say that there have been epochs of humans here. A few. Yeah. So what makes us so special? And from the point of view of Keto, all of this is the play of its own imagination anyway. It's not that the living one has any animosity towards its... its um, creation. It's just that, well, the law is the law. Again, you've got three columns of emanations. Those, white one, the goldish one, the blue, purpley one, and the multicolored, are in the middle pillar called the pillar of mildness. That's because you got craziness on the other sides. On the right side, you have wisdom, mercy, victory. Chokma, chesed, and nitzach, that is the pillar of mercy. On the left side, understanding, severity, splendor. Bina, gevura, and chod, that is the pillar of severity or strength. Both are necessary, and both are part of all of creation. And both energies, forces, move and dynamically flow betwixt them. Because sometimes, mercy. Ah, sun is out, it's 72 degrees, Nice, gentle breeze. Ain't nobody around causing no trouble. Everything is cool. And sometimes, severity. Cop comes up and says, you can't, you can't be here on the sand. This beach is closed down. Matter of fact, what you got in that cooler? Come on, let's go. Sometimes. Sometimes the person you're talking to is being really nice. Sometimes they're tripping. It is how we work with those seemingly opposite energies in our daily walk that makes the difference between us being able to evolve easily and having a more rocky road. Libra, yes? Sun is in Libra. Is that symbol? The scales. Libra has a lot to do with equilibration. That is the work of the middle pillar. That is our best way in evolution, to find the equilibration. We actually are designed and destined to equilibrate all of the various seemingly opposite forces and energies in our experience. 
thereby clearing the way for somebody else. Because the beautiful thing about it is, with human intelligence starting in Nitzach, we contribute to it. Each one of us contributes something to that group consciousness. Don't underestimate it. It is foolish of us to think, little old me, I can't make any difference in the world. Every prayer, every time we sit in meditation, every time we study and have an, oh, wow, really? Every single time, it does something wonderful for humanity. Hence, my mission, the thing my life is now dedicated to, I am here to bring high vibe music and arts to as many people as I can. And it might not just be my song. This is stuff I write. But man, I was at a wonderful thing last night. Y'all know Jamie Lula? Yeah. Y'all dig Jamie Lula? Yeah. Please give Jamie Lula big love because that, bruh, ooh, woo. Love me some Jamie Lula. I was at his house. Every month he holds a songwriter circle. And wonderful songwriters, high vibe songwriters get together and talk about stuff. We share songs, song ideas, song hopes, and, and all of that. It's wonderful, wonderful. So stuff is happening. The evolution revolution is real. It is happening. People are choosing. Here it is. We have to choose to participate. We have to choose to evolve in this way. It will happen eventually, given enough time. You know, in nomine Patris et Filii Spiritus Sancti. You know, really. But we have the ability to choose. And there have been generations and generations and thousands and thousands and thousands of people over thousands of years who have worked. You're right, you're right. Oh, yes, I shall sing something. Florence. Florence is telling me what to do again. And I know better. I got to do something. Okay, so you're choosing, yeah? Okay, so quick thing. Let's go. Slide, slide, slide. Three things, three points. Easy way to be an evolutionary revolutionary in this world. Very effective. First one is click. Tell the truth. <laughs> truth with a capital T. Who are you? What are you? What's the truth about you? None of this I'm only human stuff. Or because I'm a Libra, I'm a perfectionist. Or because of the. T nah, uh uh, no. The truth is, you are a perfect emanation of the one life, the one power. Perfect representation. Perfect. That's it. Next. Oh, tell the truth about everybody else, too. Don't go lying on your neighbor. Don't, don't, don't say, I hate that person because, oh, man, that, he ain't nothing but a liar. He might be lying, but he's so much more than that. So at the very least, hold that in your heart. So the second one is, mind your own business. Mind your own. Don't be trying to get into everybody's thing. Okay, I know your cousin's, your cousin's second girl decided that she's no longer a girl, but she's a they. Do you gotta get on the phone and tell everybody about it? Oh, Charlie, what they're a they. What in the world is a they? This ain't business. It ain't hurting nobody. They have a journey to go through. Let them define it. The living one will take care of them as the living one is taking care of you. Hmm? All right. And what is your business? Business is the business of an evolutionary revolution. Let's stay in prayer. Let's stay in meditation. Let's stay in study. Let's stay in sacred service. Let's stay in these things. Next point. When in doubt, love. <laughs> and here's how you know when you're in doubt. When something comes to your mind and something else says, oh, hold up, that is not worthy of an evolutionary revolutionary. And you'll learn to feel it as you keep work, doing this work. That's a moment of doubt. Then you've got no other strategy, love. I got to practice this on the way here. I'm driving along, somebody did something silly. I had a moment of doubt. I said, oh, I love you. I love you. And then keep on pushing. Okay, I'm gonna do some music. How much time we got? Oh, hit that last. Uh, well, well, let's yeah, let's leave this one up here for se for a second, cause uh, yeah. Mic stand, mic stand, mic stand. Hold on to the mic, please. Thank you. Clip. All right. So much to say.
This is a song that I wrote during the uh, pandemic. And it kind of summarizes what we've been talking about. And it comes from uh, the teachings of Yeshua. It's called The Least of These. I've got something on my mind And it's high time for my confession To the world I may seem kind And it's success in my profession But when I search deep in my soul I find a hole about the size of your oppression And I wonder The solution is calling for me Whatever I've done to the least Whatever I've done to the least Whatever I've done to the least of these Well, I've done it, I've done it, I've done it to me Maybe I can see the signs Maybe I don't want to name it now Maybe I believe some lies But it breaks my heart to claim it Oh Socialize to minimize the pain you feel, then just reframe it. So I'm wondering, wondering now, can I be a solution somehow? Whatever I've done to the least, or whatever I've done to the least. Whatever I've done to the least, the least of these. Well, I've done it, I've done it, I've done it to me. Yeah. I just can't take it no more. Blaming somebody else for my Start. I'll change my mind, change my heart. I will open, uh, really open to love, 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 to love, 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 sweet love. to the least Oh, whatever I've done to the least The least of these Well, I've done it I've done it I've done it To me I think that'll do it for tonight, y'all. Oh.
This is my situation on Saturday nights. You're cordially welcome to come on and join us. We're a small, merry band, but uh, we're trying to start uh, some trouble around here. So, hmm? You want another song? Aren't you out of time? Okay, okay yeah, I got, I got, I got more. Okay. Oh, let's do that. Mm-hmm. This is a song of transformation. This is a song of transformation. Yeah. It's a little story about a cat didn't know what he had <laughs> till he had a realization, a little revelation. <laughs> it's called the average man. Yeah. He was an average man, average face and average hands, average feet set square on the middle too. Satisfied with his mild success, as much as any average man could expect, until the day he was beset by his greatest fear. It all started with a feeling, a feeling so intense that time and space stood. What if I was born for greatness? What if I am really more than I think I am? What if mediocrity was never and the stars for me and miracles and wonders was the plan for the average man? He said he found the nerve to stretch and reach beyond the bell curve, but never did for fear of drawing back an empty hand. He said, What's an average man to do with so little time and all the things to think through? Maybe I should just stick to what I understand. Oh, but he couldn't shake that feeling. A feeling so immense it filled the whole. What if I was born for greatness? What if I am really more than I think I am? What if mediocrity was never in the stars for me? And miracles and wonders was the plan for the Na 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 na
na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na na You were born, you were born for more, more. Saying I was born, I was, I was born for greatness. I was born, I was born for more. Say I was born, I was born for greatness. I was born to show a little bit more. Na 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 na. Na 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 Keep it coming, keep it coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Did we enjoy that? So, a little bit more love, just a little bit more love. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. I had a blast. I learned so much. And watching everyone's faces, I was watching your energy. You all got brighter. You all got bigger. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for your words, your wisdom, the education, and the beautiful music. And we are going to invite Burl Bullerjack to come up for meditation. Sun. The sun? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Hi, my name is Burl, and uh, many of you know I lead the uh, meditation drum circle. Uh, I'll be leading the uh, world healing meditation tonight with this drum. And, uh, You got it? Yes. All right, good. So uh, I'll be leading the uh, world healing meditation tonight with this drum. And um, meditating with the drum, like pretty much all meditation techniques, uses a focus for the conscious mind, something to occupy it, something it can hold on to so that it stops paying any attention to that voice in our head that chatters away all day long and deprived of conscious attention, the chatterbox will quiet down and become still. In that moment of stillness, I experience uh, pure awareness, no thought, just pure awareness, and uh, a sense of connection to the greater whole. So since this is a uh, world healing meditation, when you've reached that place of stillness and connection. I encourage everyone to open up your hearts and uh, allow healing energy to flow through, radiate out into our own lives and out across the planet, healing all who are in need. So if you would now, I encourage you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And release, settling into relaxation.
Once more, nice deep breath. And release. Now just breathe normally. And with each exhalation, feel yourself slipping deeper into relaxation. Focus on listening. Give the drum 100% of your conscious attention. Ignoring the chatterbox. Allowing it to quiet down and become still. Focus on listening. Let the drum take you there.
I'd like every ten to take a deep breath. And as you release, become aware of your bodies sitting in meditation. And whenever you're ready, open your eyes, alert and aware. How are we feeling? We were given a lot of information tonight. All of that information went in through our senses and it's filtering through our systems. And as we rest tonight, know that this will filter even deeper into who you are, into your consciousness becoming a part of who you are so that you can resonate more freely and more fully all that you are. So thank you for coming out tonight to join us. Let's take a minute and just take a breath. connecting with each other, reconnecting with ourself, connecting with all that we have experienced, and preparing for the trip home. Once again, take a deep breath in. Now, let's turn our attention to our guest speaker performer and flow love in his direction. He did not have to come today. He had no choice. He had to be here today. This was our blessing and a gift to us. And we send you back home with much gratitude, knowing that what you've shared with us has made us more than we were before. Thank you, Burl, for the meditation. I felt that even out in the hallway because I had to walk out. Thank you, Liz for the amazing information that I'm taking with me for the whole month, preparing for who we will be as we make choices. Thank you, Florence, for the wonderful Om Shanti. I'm happy I got to participate. We've had a magnificent ceremony today. All of you contributed immensely to it and to it. We come together every month doing these ceremonies. It takes us a month to prepare. We plan, we talk, we discuss. And we do it all for you. We do it all for ourselves. We do it for the planet. So we'll take a moment and just acknowledge the board, a spiritual unity movement, and who they are and why they are here. Just with a little grateful moment, including you, Miss Karina. Please stand so we can see you and acknowledge you. Florence Burl, Frank in the sound booth, Karina, our newest member, Nancy who had to leave. We also would like to thank our newest sound guy. We, none of us have met you before, but so grateful for all that you have given us tonight. Thank you for your time and your energy and your expertise. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization and our donations, your donations are tax deductible. Should anyone <clears throat> choose to do that, Liz is standing in the back, she's the treasurer, she will take care of you, um, making sure that you get any forms you need. And for those of you who feel that spiritual unity movement has become a home, please feel free to tithe. She can take care of that for you as well. You will find our mailing address on your inserts. Any questions you have, our information is there. Feel free to give us a call. If you would like to be a speaker in the future or a musician in the, in the future or you know someone, please let Florence know. We are happy to entertain any and all of those ideas. 
I'll take them. We have a couple of things coming up. Spiritual Unity Movement is participating in an event here. Thank you. Um, it's called A Day of Healing, Metaphysical and Artisan Fall Fair. There are some flyers in the back. Feel free to pick them up. Liz is holding up one now. This is taking place on Sunday, November 12th at 11 o'clock in the morning and lasting through four o'clock in the afternoon. So you've been to these. There's going to be all sorts of things going on. We have a variety of... It's a free event, so show up. It's here in the Valley and at the Tarzana Community and Cultural Center. And if anyone would like to take note of that, grab a flyer on the way out. But the address is 19130 Ventura Boulevard, Tarzana, California. That's for those online, 91356. You can look them up online at www.healingartssfv.com. Next month's ceremony features Reverend Mike McMorrow. And he's very excited to do this ceremony. He requested to do this ceremony. And this is the goddess ceremony, taking place on Thursday, October 26. And, you know, we start at 6.55. And, and Dina I'll be sharing, will be with <laughs> Dina I'll be sharing as the musical performer that night, which means it's going to be a lot of you. So if you are intending to show up or if you haven't thought about it, come on out. Bring your goddess attire. Walk in the light of the goddess which you are, whichever version of that resonates with you. We are going to celebrate the goddess in all her forms and all of her many, 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 many forms. So that's Thursday, October 26, a month from today. Um, thank you again for coming out. We're going to go into our closing, unless I've left something else out. Oh yeah, um, in your in your program, um, in your insert, there is um, an acknowledgement card. It's a card just saying how we did. So you can fill that out. Feel free to, and if you don't, that's okay as well. And should anyone um, need to, please take advantage of the healing box in the back. Also, your donations make the difference. We can't do this without your donations. We'll show up and do it for free, but we rent this spot and we pay an honorarium to our performance. It's a small honorarium, but we give them something. So your donations make a difference and they matter. So if you haven't had a chance to do that yet, please feel free to drop it in the box or you can, you can uh, donate online. And otherwise, who you are, you are the gift. So thank you all for showing up. Thank you for being here. And that's it. Oh, she, we have an affirmation. This is the month of, of October, and in my sanctuary, October is the prosperity month. So, would you like to lead that? What did you say? We're repeating after Florence. I accept my divine opulence, prosperity, and abundance. And I deserve it. Say that one again. And I deserve it. Feel it in your body. And I deserve it. Energy, energy, energy. It's all energy. It's not a big deal. Let, don't, let, don't let it be. Just, I need this. I want this. I'm doing this. I am this. I need this. I want this. I'm doing this. I am this. That's it. It's easy. Let it be easy. Okay. The importance of radiating the light beings that you are. We're in a time where you, who you are is mighty important. What you do is critical to the world. And we're just wanting it because we know who we are and we know who you are. We feel each other even when we're not aware of it. We sense each other. We are only one. There is only one. So we spend the rest of this evening nourishing that nourishing that within ourselves and recognizing that and allowing that within ourselves so as we close tonight we invite the candle lighters to come forward oh yeah and i will bring up florence riggs to perform the closing ritual
As we come to the close of our full moon ceremony this evening, let's take a moment to savor the centered focus of healing energy that we've generated here together. Remember, as you let your own light shine, you simultaneously give other people permission to do the same. Aha. Uh -huh. Clearly, knowing yourself as an instrument of light, a being of spirit, you add one more grain of sand to the scales that hold the balance for our global future. Know that at a certain point, one grain of sand can tip the scales. You, in this very moment, may be that grain of sand. Thank you, candle lighters, for coming up to form a circle. And I invite everyone else now to come on up and come into the circle. Bring your light and your beautiful energy. <clears throat> Let us embody the spiritual power that has been generated and received from the forces of light that guide this service. Let us focus that energy into the group center, allowing it to rise up and pour this blessing out into our world extending its positive healing effect throughout the awareness of humankind and the consciousness of our planet. We'll, we'll sound the extended freeform OM as the sacred tone pours through you. Feel yourself participating, drawing this healing love energy deeply into yourself and sending it out into your life, our lives, and out into the world. As we sound the own, let's consciously extend our blessings to our planetary life, Mother Earth, including the animals, the trees, the air, the water, the minerals, all life, as well as to all those who are in need of healing. And for those we would like to include in this healing circle, you, we can speak their names now silently or audibly. And with power, love, and intelligence, let's send out this healing light energy to transform the consciousness of humankind. Oh. Namaste. <laughs> namaste, namaste. I am greeting you. Namaste, namaste. You are greeting me. Namaste, namaste. God in me sees you. Namaste, namaste. God in you sees me. Namaste. Namaste, namaste, namaste. Good night. Blessings. Woohoo!